Hi everybody, Don Giannetti, Lighting-Essentials.com and Project52ProSystem.com where we're everything about commercial and professional photography and we want you to succeed more than anything. Listen, over the holidays I did a post over on the uh, Lighting-Essentials.com page where uh, I posted one idea a day for 25 days. 25. I, did, I took weekends off, but uh, one idea a day and uh, I just thought I would uh, take you through a few of them and uh, see if there's uh, something there that you might like. Now these are ideas to help boost your creativity, help you make a, you know, become a better photographer, a uh, better creative person, what have you. But uh, these are all things that I've done. So uh, every one of these things and a couple of them I'm preparing to do again. So uh, the first one I put up is one of my favorites. It's the one hour challenge. Uh, that means you get all your lights, you get your camera set up, your cards in, so all you have to do is photograph, right? And you take the most mundane of items. Paperclip. Or uh, a charger plug. Or a, uh, I don't know, a rock. A shell. A thing. And then for one hour, you explore it. One hour. One hour only. Take as many different kinds of shots as you can. Experiment with lighting. How about hard lighting, soft lighting, bounce lighting, lighting from a, a very effective, uh, a very efficient surface. Bounce it off a mirror, bounce it off st stainless steel. What happens if you, uh, if you come in close and do macro? What happens if you put a wide angle and come in super close with a wide angle and distort everything? What happens, what happens, what happens? One hour, not two hours, not 40 minutes, an hour can't spend an hour uh, it's not good uh, number three on that day the first day was uh, shoot like you're shooting film or that first week I'm sorry shoot like you're shooting film in other words instead of slamming through the images I mean I, I'm a digital photographer I use digital cameras and I, I know that I can go out and then click click I can just do a bunch of stuff uh, but lately I'm not um, the actuations on my uh, Nikon DF, which is probably five years old now, is not very high for a five-year-old camera. Because I simply don't go out and bang it around. I treat it like film. I try to make the shot in my viewfinder first. I try to make sure everything's right. Do I overshoot? Yeah, a little, probably. I'm not saying, oh, I only come back with 27 pictures from a five-day trip. No, that's not, that's not quite either. But I don't come home with 2,700 pictures. I come home with the pictures I wanted to get. Another thing is, of course, if it's not right, don't take the picture. Um, we don't have to take the photograph. We only have to take it if it's, if it's right. So on days that I don't see a photograph, I'm okay. I didn't get one that day. But if you train yourself to shoot like you're shooting film, like every time you click the shutter, it costs you five or six dollars, or in the case of shooting a large format camera, twelve to thirty-five or forty dollars every time you go click. Um, and you make sure that every image works. So uh, what you do is you pretend you got a uh, twenty-four roll, uh, twenty-four exposure roll in your camera, and you go out and you take twenty-four pictures. That's it. No fair dumping them. No fair cheating. You're only cheating yourself. But try it. Really think about the photograph before you snap the shutter. It's pretty amazing. Let's pop over to day two. Uh, the link, link for this is in the... Uh, I'm just going through a few of these. The link is in the description below. Uh, and you can get down there and click over and see all these. Uh, hopefully I'll have a PDF up pretty soon. I love this. Restrict yourself to one extreme lens. So if you're going to go somewhere for like a three-day weekend, great. Put a 20 on your camera. Not a zoom. A 20. Or put a 200 on. That's it. That's all you got. One time I did a, I did a full day on the Oregon coast, and I decided that the most used lens I was use, that I had been on the previous three days on the coast drive was my... 24 uh, or 28 millimeter lenses. So the fourth day I decided I'm going to put the 200 on and that's all I'm going to use. And of course, you know, first, uh, you know, 
first time you come around a corner and you see this big thing and oh my god I gotta put the wide angle no I used my iPhone for that from my digital camera I stuck with the 200 and by noon I'm starting to see photographs as the 200 would see and by mid-afternoon I'm very comfortable with the 200 because I've locked myself into visualizing what the 200 could do um, to create the shot the 28 millimeter was out of you know I, I didn't have it so my brain wasn't going oh finally my brain was just focusing on what could I do and they're very interesting photographs uh, there's a few uh, on the site there I did some some waves and things my friend Doug Adams uh, kicked in with an idea that he got when he was in uh, uh, Art Center and he had to shoot a knife an orange and a spoon a knife an orange and a spoon and a spoon not in a spoon and a spoon it's a still life three items knife orange spoon go get him tiger um now let's see number nine take a photograph on the hour for every hour of daylight did that on my motorcycle trip uh last time i was in wyoming and i set the uh my phone for every hour i stop get off the bike get the camera out and find a photograph Sometimes, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. You have to find a photograph, and all of a sudden there's a photograph. Wyoming was tough because it was a lot of miles of long, flat things, and I had to find something to shoot every hour. only gave myself five minutes to do it, uh, and it was fun. It was a really fun day. I had, I had, great, I had a great time. I, was, <laughs> I guess when you're, you're lonely on the motorcycle out in the middle of nowhere, you can find ways to have fun by yourself, you know? <clears throat> how about number 12 don't follow the pack have you ever been to somewhere like Zion or um, oh gosh uh, Horseshoe Bend or Arches <clears throat> if you've been there lately you know what I'm talking about when I say lots and lots and lots and lots of people uh, I just uh, saw a photograph a friend of mine have did of Arches and I would easily say there's 120 or 150 photographers all there trying to get that sunrise through the arch don't do that look the other way look north look south look east just don't look towards where you want to where everyone else is looking look left look right looking back of you maybe that's even better to say don't go where the pack goes if you go to death valley if there's nobody at Zabriskie Point, that ain't never going to happen. But if there's nobody there, yeah, you know. But in the end, you're going to get a picture of Zabriskie Point. I don't even photograph Horseshoe Bend anymore. I've been there so many times. I don't even take my camera. I got a shot I really liked a couple of years ago, and I'm done. You know, unless there was a, you know, thunderstorm moving through the canyon, should be pretty cool. You know, I might shoot that, but I don't need it anymore. I don't want it anymore. So, um... The only, the only place that I can continually go and find uh, different images is uh, the Slot Canyons. And I know people say, oh, it's been shot to death and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, number 14 is make a book. If you haven't made a book yet, do it. Maybe your best photographs from the recent trip or uh, um, photographs from uh, a vacation or some still lifes. Whatever. Make, some, make a book. You'll, if there's never been a better time to make a book. You can make a book and you can stick it right up on the, on the uh, uh, desk there and, or the table and have people come over and share it. Make a book. It's great fun. It's great fun and your creativity just... Ooh, 16 and 17. Those are ones that are really, really challenging and I think it's really a fun thing to do. Number one is... Find a short story. There's, and I have links to places where you can find short stories. If you can't find a short story, find a short story and illustrate it. You do the photograph for the short story. I don't care what this story is about. You do the photograph. Find a short story, read it. Short stories generally, you know, short. Uh, read it. Come up with a photograph that would dovetail right into that story and do that photograph. That's number 16. Number 17 is write a short story about one of your photographs. So take a photograph out of the out of the mix, pull it up, sit there. What is that 
what does that picture tell you? What 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 words start to come in come to mind? What 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 do you want to say? Maybe you don't want to say anything at first. That's okay. Put pencil to paper. Something will come out. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, uh, if you have uh, uh, never painted a wine bottle black, go up and check it out. Uh, I've got a link to some videos, etc. Get a wine bottle, take the label off, smooth it up, and paint it pure black. Paint it flat black, satin black, and glossy black. Or if you have three wine bottles, paint one of each. Get your lights out and start to experiment. You will learn more from shooting those black bottles. Matte, semi-matte, and glossy. You'll learn more about light doing that for a couple hours than you can even imagine. It's pretty amazing. Over to day five here. Day five. What did we do on day five? Day five. Uh, oh, shooting black and white. Put your your, LE, your, uh, your your panel on the back, put your preview to black and white, go and shoot black and white, shoot a black and white story. You're shooting raw, right? You're shooting raw, so you've got the color pictures if you ever want to go back and pull it out, pull out the color, but shoot in black and white, think in black and white, look in black and white, see in black and white. You're looking at for different things when you're shooting black and white than you are color. And it's pretty much fun what you can do, it really is. Ooh, 23 is fun. Photograph the same thing for two weeks. Same thing. I have a cactus garden that I, sort of succulent cactus garden that I maintain on my porch up until last summer, which pretty much cooked half my cactus garden. Very sad. But I go out there every once in a while. I mean, at least two or three times a month. And I'll take my camera out there and I'll you know, shoot the cactus, piddle around with the, the succulents. Um, one of the shots that I did for my cactus garden just surpassed 2 million downloads on Unsplash. I was checking the focus on the camera. It was really a focus test. That was it. I uploaded spun, spun, uh, Unsplash and got 2 million. If those of you who don't like Unsplash, nah, I don't want to hear about it. Nah, I don't care. I do. Um, 24 Five, create a gallery and show your work. Find a place to show your work. Um, put, it, put it together. You'll find coffee shops, libraries, uh, uh, joint work, co-op work places, city buildings. Uh, a lot of these places have uh, the availability, show, availability to show your work. Go and show it. It's really, really fun. Um, and you'll learn a lot about your work when you start to think about putting pictures up as a show. So that's just a rough uh, a few of them. One, uh, one other, you know, we always hear about, you know, if you're struggling with uh, uh, taking portraits of, of strangers, if that's a tough one for you. And Project 52, that's one of the very first assignments is take a portrait of a stranger because it's so damn hard to do. Get the hard stuff over first. We can move on. So we well take a picture of a stranger a day or a stranger a week. Okay, how's this? Take a picture of 10 strangers in one day. I don't know, go to a baseball game, go to a bike race, go to a, anywhere where there's a lot of people congregating and talk 10 people into posing for you in one day. You want a real kick in the butt? Try doing it, in, doing it in two hours. 10 portraits of strangers in two hours. It'll definitely be a real real eye-opening experience. And you're not going to be afraid to, to uh, ask people to uh, make a photograph again, at least not nearly as afraid as you were the first time you did it. So one of the things that uh, we all have to do is, uh, you know, I, I hated doing it the first time as well, but I have no problem doing it now. Walk right up to them and say, I'd like to take a picture. Sometimes they say no. Sometimes they say yes. It's all cool. Listen, uh, the link to the all 25 of the ideas is down below. Go and knock yourself out. If you do it and you, um, uh, and you have something, share it with me. Uh, put it up. Uh, there's a, there's a, a link there for you to, to share your images with me. I'd appreciate it very much. Uh, send me and say, hey, Don, I did number 22, and this is what I ended up with. Give me a link. 
enclose a photograph, whatever. Uh, if I get a bunch of good ones, I'll put them up. Anyway, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, hit the like and the little bell. You don't have to do the bell. I mean, the bell's annoying, but uh, hit, hit the, uh, the subscribe and uh, see more stuff coming up. Be a lot, lot more stuff coming up. I promise. I've said this in the past and got a little bit sidetracked. I'm not getting sidetracked. I have a whole list of content uh, coming up. All of it is designed to help you become a better photographer. Uh, and uh, this video is already too long, so have a great one. See you next time.